Welcome to the Valley Advocate Podcast, featuring interviews that take us deeper into the people and happenings on the local scene. For more podcasts and a closer look at what's going on in the Valley, visit us at valleyadvocate.com. Hi, I'm Chris Gaudreau. I'm a staff writer with the Valley Advocate. Uh, welcome to the podcast. This is uh, Gina Beavers. It is me. Yeah. And we're here with Beverly Ketch and Hannah Brookman from Looky Here, a brand new space in Greenfield, Massachusetts. It's always pretty remarkable that I remember all those words together. But welcome. <laughs> so glad to have you here. So tell us, what is this Looky Here? Um, it's a creative reuse and workshop space. Is so- it a maker space? Or is it more um, like a... I don't think it... Uh, a makerspace is usually really tech involved. Yeah, like, is that right? So no, I wouldn't say it's a makerspace. We have... Um, well, first of all, we're a reuse store, so it's like an art supply... It's a thrift store for art supplies and music equipment. And it. we're a nonprofit, so we can accept donations from people's art collections or supply collections and resell them for cheap. Um, and then the workshops... Um, it's mostly a lot of the people involved just have skills and things that they want to share. There's um, my boyfriend wants to do a philosophy book club. There's people who are doing Spanish workshop. There's um, Beverly's doing children's classes, making fairy houses. Um, so, and we have a form you can fill out if you want to have your own workshop at Looky oh. Here. So hopefully that'll be kind of, because we have, it's a nice space. So yeah. you can have those kinds of things happening. But we also do have a tape duplicating machine so people can make their own ca- cassette tape duplications. Oh, cool. And we're working on fixing a risograph machine so that you can use that for print duplications. How exciting. So it'll be that kind of an art service also. And I don't know if it's a maker space. But yeah, I would think that. No, I was just curious. This yeah. is, it's, it's, it's a community space for sure. For sure. And it'll pull people in around the arts. Mm-hmm. And where is it located? 28 Chapman Street in Greenfield. In Greenfield. Exciting, Mm -hmm. exciting. So how did it all start? Well, I was um, walking in Greenfield and I noticed the spot where this, you know, sweet little funny storefront. And it seemed so appealing to me. And the thing is, Hannah and I and other friends had already gotten pretty deep into the project of um, starting our own TV show. And so I thought, honestly, maybe I shouldn't say anything because if I say I'd want to <laughs> open up a space also, people are just going to think I'm crazy because, I mean, we we're already in a deep in a project together. But instead of everybody thinking I was crazy, everybody was completely interested and every, everybody kind of fell in love with the space when they saw it. There's something nice about it. There's something nice about how the light comes in. There's something nice about Big being in the window. space. Oh, nice. The, the, it, the, and it, it's sort of, you know, I just, it, it's just off from downtown's Main Street. Yep. So it's very near downtown and it has that feeling, but it also has a little set aside feeling too. So it's a great place for things to happen. And everything that we've done so far, we've had, because we have done things already, even though the, the official grand opening is, is going to happen on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, we've already had poetry readings and drawing groups and, um, writing workshops Concerts and, and film series. yes and a film wow. a film series so so and all those every every time i've i've made it i've to almost everything that's happened there not all because of just life but um I, i've always just really enjoyed being there and also we we have beautiful art on the walls because it's also a gallery <laughs> oh. and that's been amazing to just be surrounded by that well those nice events go on. I can't wait to see the spot. You saw it, Chris, didn't you? No, I haven't you, seen oh, it. Oh, you actually. did the article. Yeah, I, I wrote the article. Yeah. Uh, just uh, sort of the preview, uh, talking about uh, looky here and uh, what you guys are doing. Um, w- one thing that I found really interesting is that you guys are working on a children's TV show. Uh, yes. Can you tell us more How about that? Fun. Well, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we're, we're having so much fun um, <laughs> doing this because I mean, you would think that um, there would be dozens of children's shows to look at where there are live action um, fairies and mermaids and things like that. But the truth is there really isn't. You know, people haven't gone as far as they can, especially with the technology being so easy and available that we yeah. as just amateurs can can learn by ourselves. And you're very amateur. Yeah, <laughs> we have to learn everything. Which and is a beautiful part of the aesthetic. Right? Yes. Yes. So I, I, I gotta see this. Yeah, yeah and I kids can learn it themselves too. The kids so have been the, helping us make it so Yeah, far. they're just as good as we are. <laughs> and they have and, and, and the kids in my neighborhood inspired it to start. And when I told Hannah, um, 
she took to the idea like a fish to water <laughs> and we are since then partnering on it and then our other friends that have joined in too we've all really had a blast with everything we've done so far and we were able to get a couple of grants so that we can pay for the little expenses involved there's a lot that's free which is amazing and we've gotten help from um, the local production company in Turner's Falls called Fast Lights which mm -hmm. was, which came in incredibly handy mm -hmm. and also GCTV and MCTV and NCTV They've all helped, yeah. which means that that part is free, but there's still expenses just to make sure. the props and the costumes. And so it's really been great to get a, a little grant and, mm -hmm. and to get started. We're having so and much And now fun. it's umbrellaed under the nonprofit of Looky Here, which is the, it's our media wing. So it's gotcha. a community-based children's television program that's kind of sponsored by Looky Here. Oh, my gosh. We finally got all of our ducks in a row, and so was, we're having a big great. party it's on like Sunday. It's, like, not a small <laughs> thing to apply and receive your 501c3. That's and a like lot of work. And, insurance, and she, right, and business she, license, and the grants. Luckily, you had the space, because that, that's always another spot. Mm -hmm. So you had your space first, and then you could, like, Yes, it did fall into place yeah. pretty well. It wasn't exactly, you know, easy peasy, but <laughs> no. at the same time, things did go pretty well. That's it happened fast. Yeah. I mean, all of this started not too long ago. In about so. November. Oh, my gosh. That is fast. Yeah. Wait, how long did it take you to get your 501c3? You know what? We were really lucky we got it like that. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, since November, that's amazing because yeah. that's a, that's an arduous process for a lot of people. Yeah. But we kind of dove, it's, we dove right in and started doing things. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. We were just able to say, we were doing this because we were. Right, <laughs> we, right, That right. was a nice thing to have a bunch so of people Our mission were, just kind of fell into place based on what we already wanted to do. So because we weren't organized enough in the beginning to actually <laughs> have a steady mission and right. like a real plan and a business plan and an LLC it all just kind of happened as yeah. we needed it to happen when we started kind of hitting ground walls it took us forever to open a bank account because we just didn't have what we needed to open I know a bank everything account. kept going wrong with that but we're learning <laughs> so much but you have to because and now you have grant money to now, take care of now yes, we have I to think learn, you learn how faster to by take doing money. Than any do. other way I think you're right it is interesting though because we actually met Hannah and I met um, well we and the first time I set eyes on Hannah, we were looking at a building that the town was yeah. it would have been able to give for free um, to someone who could afford to fix it up because yeah. we because what was on our mind then and in our community of amazing mm -hmm. creative people, we were thinking of having an uh, an art school, an unaccredited kind of folk art school, natural oh. folk art school. And if we'd been able to, but then it turned out that that building um, at that time we couldn't afford to do the fixing up it needed even if right. we got it for free right um maybe down the line we the will i mean requirement I, to have it. Mm -hmm. and, and it, it was such a wonderful um building and and we re there is sort of a school of thought an amazing group of artists in this area and we know a lot of them and and so it's been incredible to try to make one more wonderful focal point for our artistic group but so many people have already been coming in since we've started to do renovations on the space, we've been meeting a lot of people just who stop by and get really excited about yeah, the idea. Yeah, Greenfield folks that are just, you know, really interested in getting involved. That's, uh, Chris is a Greenfield folk now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just bought a, he and his wife just bought a house up there. Mm -hmm. So he's official, official Greenfielder. So what is your, what, what's your specific background? Do you, were you a teacher? No, I well, I, I worked in a, a library for one year. That, oh, and that is okay. the, a, a little job I recently had. But I, just, I have a house cleaning business. But I've also been part of the music scene around here because I've been, I was in a band. Oh gosh, low these many years, <laughs> and so I've been and. And I'm it's such a, a great, and I'm still in a band now, and it, it, so it, it's been amazing to be part of the music community, but there's also an amazing visual mm -hmm. art community around that. Specifically, there's a lot of uh, musical artists who also create visual art, and so that was part of what I wanted to bring in having this gallery open, look here as a gallery, but then we ran into the problem that um, the fire department said that in the retail space that we had rented that there couldn't be more than 20 people in there oh. at a time. And that's why for our grand opening, it's from the morning till the night, because then oh, it won't be a time where word. if everybody packed in, right. you know, it would be like, oh, you have to you go. go. We, yeah. Come back <laughs> so, in that was, so that was one of the glitches we ran into that oh, made us have to completely goodness. change gear and re rethink what we were doing, but it was luckily Sarah and Hannah who had were, think, were thinking on their feet and thought of a lot of great ideas that could still make it work, even though it wasn't going to be what we originally pictured. Right. Oh, 
that's pretty remarkable. But but I guess that does. I don't know if that answers the question. That's okay. What that's I do, funny but 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 yeah, more or less maybe. I, I think it's really awesome that you're opening in Greenfield specifically because you, you, there's a large artist community in Greenfield, Turner's, also in um, like Brattleboro, Southern Vermont as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and it's all right. It's so so close. Mm-hmm. And people, a lot of people have come up from down here too. Yeah. What about you, Hannah? Um, I. I've been an artist forever, and I I went to an art school when I was younger, and then I went to college in Vermont and ended up back here a couple years ago um, and befriended Beverly through my boyfriend, Omid, who played music with her. And um, I I guess while I was in college, I was doing a lot of research. I went to school in Bennington in Mm -hmm. Vermont, and I did a lot of research in town about making an artist community because that town was really, it seemed really difficult to integrate into, um, and nobody from the college would ever stay. And there was no, I realized it was because there was no art, and there was nothing that was even open after seven Mm o'clock. And I'm from Denver, Colorado, and so I, I grew up with a couple different kind of alternative art spaces that I were really important for me right. as a teenager. Um, they were kind of like, you know, a little bit risky, but mostly safe places for me to just kind of meet other artists, mm-hmm. meet other artists my age or other people older than me, people coming through town. And um, I was able to be a part of a community. And I was, I was meeting um, people in town in Bennington that were interested in something like that. I was working in, in high schools and would kind of do interviews with all of the arts facilitators in town and ask if, you know, would this kind of art space be a good idea for Bennington? Would this be something that you think would be important for the community? And everyone said yes. But then I did graduate and move, just like everybody <laughs> else. Right. Um, and so that hasn't happened here, but I've been able to kind of pick up with that again through Looky Here. Um, because I do still think that there is a need for a place for people to just kind of hang out. And like, it's a, we want it to be a free to be space where we've got couches and record players and tea and like cheap free art supplies and cheap free workshops. So people, anybody can just come and kind of meet an art community or be a part of an art community. Because I think you're right. I mean, that's the thing about art. I mean, with musicians, it's different because, well, most musicians, because you'll tend to collaborate and play together. Um, There are, of course, musicians who don't, not like Chris, but (laughs) Chris is very social. But but artists, we tend to be in a silo in a way. You know, you're creating and you're creating on your own and to be able to, a lot of times you're not collaborating. So for people to be able to come to a communal space and kind of get that energy from other artists, that's a really big deal. Because musicians mm-hmm. do get that. You get to feed mm-hmm. from each other. And yeah. artists don't always have that opportunity. That's kind of one thing that I think is, is nice that Looky Here isn't necessarily going to be a music venue as much as we thought it was in the first place. Mm. Because there are so many music venues and there aren't really as many spaces for artists to have that kind of socializing. And I've always felt that as an artist who have kind of always been around a music scene. Right. I've always wished that there was an art scene that I could participate in, but the art scene is usually kind of these white cube fancy galleries that I don't right. feel a part of or I'm not interested in. So I think this is going to be a nice alternative. I, I wish you could see like the free draw group that happened oh. um, several times. I mean, when I went, I mean, it really, it's inspiring. And, the, and if people are there who I wish people, I hope people come who drawing isn't really what they consider their thing. Because I, when you see people in action, and it is free, it's so right. appropriately named free draw because <laughs> everybody really is free about it. And it's just a matter of really seeing and, and, and drawing and it is truly an open feeling. It's, yeah. There's nothing fussy or off-putting about it. And I, it, and it's, and the more the merrier. It's been, there have been great ones where just a few of us showed up and great ones where there were maybe a dozen people. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, so hopefully anyone who's interested sh- should make a point of coming. That will be weekly, right? Mm-hmm. It'll be weekly on Wednesday evenings at seven. Okay. And then I was going to do the uh, last Wednesday of every month, I was going to try to hire a model because there's mm-hmm. a lot of people who have interest in uh, drawing drawing, right. nude, nude model figure right. drawings. So that one would be a fee to pay the model. Um, 
but I bet that would happen at the end of every month. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe you'd practice during the week, right. and then you'd bring all of your good materials and do a, a big That's nice cool. one. That's cool. So do people pay to take workshops? Um, some some will be. Mm-hmm. Some will have fees and some won't. Yep. Um, also depending on the materials. Yep. And we hope to, I mean, building the workshop calendar is something that we will probably work harder on next month. <laughs> um, I wanted to have a really great one to open with, but it's just kind of been a, we just want to like, get in the space we just took down the ceiling we repainted all the walls we like totally rearranged and made it It look so nice nice without the drop ceiling instead a nice tin ceiling was under there Mm -hmm. so it really it looks so good but we'll try to work on bringing in guest artists for workshops too so I just I really one of my big dreams I just want all of my friends to get paid to do what they like to do right and I know so many talented people who really deserve to get paid to teach some classes and I think that people would be interested in doing that and it doesn't have to be a ridiculous fee it could right it absolutely could be not. If, if if you know 15 people are interested in one person teaching something I think that it could be reasonable for both the instructor and the student to participate so absolutely that's what I hope will happen um but if people are interested in workshops they should get a hold of us yeah. on our website we'll make sure that, what's your website lookyheregreenfield.com it's so cute. Here. <laughs> but, uh, we here. reused the name. Yeah, the we store, recycled the name because it was, was on the sign already. No and they way. had then they made this great sign with the little eyes and the O's. So. Oh my gosh! That's <laughs> so so, cute. so that was also part of the reason why we wanted that shop is because it was already called Looky Here, <laughs> and it. the sign is adorable. And I and I'll just uh, give a shout out to our lovely landlady Shelby. She has been a dream yeah. the whole time, completely one hundred percent supporting all our craziness. <laughs> and I and she and she owns the bar next door. Smitty's and and it's really been so great to have her help and her support Mm -hmm. that's really cool yeah it's great having the sweet lady landlord and we have the four of us women on this board of this um group and we also are running the tv show so it just feels i know and smitty's is all female bartenders so this female oh my gosh the lady land over there there's a salon next door yeah that's all oh, that's great gosh, though that is yeah terrific. it's awesome it's pretty great that is terrific but then and then there's just like lots of funny old men who always pop in <laughs> i bet <laughs> they're like yes. it's a lady land let's but go see the ladies it's been so nice <laughs> everyone's been so kind and um and it has been really supportive fun even even though we don't have it open yet like you you guys want to talk to us and other people already want to see Absolutely. what's going on before we've even you know set it in stone so it's exciting cool. because it's always exciting to have a, a, a community resource um, you mm-hmm. know I, I mean you, you think because because like you said there's so many artists in the valley and in different pockets Greenfield I don't live in Greenfield so I'm not super familiar but I know that there are tons of artists in Greenfield or Asheville or all these other places, and when you can bring those people together in some kind of in some kind of setting like that, it's it, it generates a lot of excitement. Because I think that people are always looking for a reason to get together. Yes, it has. Mm-hmm. People have been so excited, yeah. and that it's been been interesting to see that. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I think people are going to be excited also about having the resource of a place to donate their art supplies. Sure. Because mm-hmm. the thing is, when you sort of have these things sitting around and they're kind of like, ooh, right. you're not using it. Yeah, I don't want to throw <laughs> that you know? away. <laughs> so you know, then there's a really good reason to, and also, and, you, and people could always come back and use it there. So if they right. tried to take <laughs> out, you know, that's so true, <laughs> you know? right? And maybe, don't nobody use that but me. <laughs> Shop, maybe. <laughs> right. Right. Art yeah, that's great, and um, and it's tax deductible because you're yes. a nonprofit. Yes, that's cool. Can't beat that. I know. Can't beat it with a stick. Yep, and we've gotten some great donations from great folks already. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So we'll have some good stuff on the shelves for the grand opening, but I really think it's gonna blow up soon. Yeah. Yay! Just have a feeling. Just got a feeling. That's how it is when you take donations. I think that's the f- how you got to be prepared for that. That right, there'll be a right, time right, where right. like, oh, 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 the shelves are full. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. Oh my god. Well, we only can hope for that for sure. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you. On the show. Oh my gosh, I'm so thank excited you. for you. Nice yeah. to meet you, you guys. guys have a great too. show. Like a lot of good guests. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That was Jeez, wonderful. That. Yeah. <laughs> I was really inspired by those other guests. Yes. Yeah. They're cool. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to visit us at valleyadvocate.com.